This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. Let's do it, baby. Come on. Let's do each other. Let's do each other real hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Come on now. It's Monday, ladies and gentlemen. Brennan Shop, fresh off the bare knuckle. Well, bare knuckle MMA. Game bread. Uh, game bread productions. How was that? How was that? First of all, I'd like to commend you on on quietly quietly paying for that guy's family i can just see you doing it i can just see you the guy goes i want my family here and i can just see it bugging you and going god how much would it cost i gotta do this i didn't even ask that i was just like why aren't they here he's like i live in mississippi man we can't afford to get him we have the video you can't say that to brennan we have the video can we play i it? wish more people would but i wish people more people knew this this is very important how many how many people brennan has done this for like how much money mm -hmm. how much fucking money brennan has spent on people he doesn't know and and, and so i th that is this thing that you never talk about and it's so ridiculous but this didn't surprise me that you did this but you didn't post this either somebody's like i put oh, he didn't post it he would never have posted this brennan somebody else posted didn't even it. know about it i literally had to message him and say i yeah, saw this i know Good for you, dude. You, Thanks, you, buddy. You, you flew him in. Did he win in front of his family? Here's the thing. So, my, you know, I'm spur of the moment. I'm like, I got it. I got you covered. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, who's he fighting? They're like, TJ Brown went. Oh, okay. So he's fighting on, a real like veteran. A ten notice, oh, a veteran. On like a 10-day notice. On like a 10-day notice. Like, okay. Okay. Well, hopefully I don't fly him in. He gets head kick KO'd in front of his kids. Yeah, but you don't want that. that TJ's a vet. That's not really his thing. I figured it'd be okay. He lost by submission the second round, had a good outcome. Right. I met the family afterwards. Everyone was fine. If They're you're going to lose, great to have your family there. Yeah. And also, like, at least this is a man who is doing everything he can, fighting to keep his family housed and fed, which is a, which is awesome. His name's That's Joshua Weems. But his, Joshua uh, Weems? Weems? That's a man. Yeah, but his... Salute to you, bro. He's still Superman to his kids. They okay. wanted to Superman see him Superman to me. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Fucking, he's getting in a cage and fighting. I'll, uh, I'll tell you right now, though, after yeah. sitting... C -c 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 cage side having yeah. the best view in in the in the stadium yeah in the arena yeah i'm glad i'm on the outside because it's brutal oh bud it's oh bud. because oh you love this you love this <laughs> you love this so favorite part is it is like them telling the fighter story so like so i have to sit down and interview all the fighters from prelims to the main event right yes. so you sit down with everyone this guy comes in looks on assuming you know whatever and I'm looking at the thing, he has the least amount of fights on the card. Mm. I go, five and three. Man, that's a big step up at five and three fighting game bread bare knuckle. Yeah. And his coaches are laughing. And what are you guys laughing at? He goes, he actually has over 150 fights. I went, I'm, I'm sorry, what'd you say? They go, when he was 18, he moved to Thailand, couldn't throw a punch or a kick, and got engulfed into Muay Thai. And <laughs> so his name's Anvar Boy Nazarov. Oh, boy. <laughs> Bubba. Oh. Bubba, no, you'll love this. You'll love this. So I go, oh, wow, that, that's cool, man. So you did a lot of Muay Thai fights? He goes, yes, a lot of Muay Thai fights. And his coach goes, oh, tell him about the prison fights. <laughs> I go, I'm sorry, what's a prison fight? They go, well, in Thailand, Muay Thai is so big. One of the things, programs that they have are called Muay Thai prison fights. So prisoners, whether they're in there for life, for murder, multiple murders, they train them, and then they compete against a professional. If they beat them, they get their freedom. What? And I go... Oh, and you find that? He goes, many times. And I go, well, dude, they're freedom. You got to let them win, right? He goes, absolutely not. And I go, did you win? He goes, uh-huh. And I go, how many times did you do? He goes, a bunch. And I go, how'd it go? He goes, all chaos. And Can you bring this guy up? Bring this guy up. And then his, then his coach goes, his coach goes, now think about how hard these prisoners are fighting for their freedom. For their freedom. And he goes, and he starts Look every- Look at him. Look at him. Oh, well, he looks like, he looks like a game. He looks like uh, he belongs in a video game. <laughs> He, he's a video game guy. <laughs> just just a giant head. On oh, the guy he's fighting, knocked him out in 15 seconds. Oh, no. Oh. Flying knee, knocked him out in 15 oh, seconds. Oh, no. He fought in glory. Yeah, he's a monster. And, and he's not short. He's actually kind of tall. He looks like uh, he's short. He About fights at 45. Dana side? Oh, okay. 45. Okay. Yeah, he's a smaller guy, but still. Uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, how about me? You only have, it says you're eight fights there, five and three. I said, man, you probably have the least experience here, though. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's your 150 plus fights. I went, oh, Ugh. my bad. With those elbows and knees. And, oh. I went nuts when he knocked him out. I'm like, I tried to tell you, this guy is a monster. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. It was so fun. I had so much fun. Really? Yeah, you know I me, mean? I've, I've, I've hesitated doing anything with commentary well, for so long. It makes you nervous. You just, it makes you. Just the whole thing. But also, the lot. bare knuckle thing is, is very bloody. How did oh. our boy Junior DeSantos do? 
He did good. He fought Alan Belcher, who, you know, that's his thing. He's a world champion, bare knuckle. And JDS looked good, man. His footwork. And then he surprised me. He took Alan down, and then that's wow. where he won the fight because in the exchange, Alan went to get up. You know, Alan's a certified black belt, savage down there. Alan kicks Alan off. Alan was a wrestler before that or no? Jiu-Jitsu guy. Okay. Just Big time jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu guy. So he goes to get up, and in the exchange to get up, Alan, or, uh, JDS hits him with left hook, drops oh him. Yeah. Wow. They're big, and I, I kept, I, maybe, you know, and Alan did a post, and he was upset about my commentary and Robin Black's commentary, more with Robin than me, but. They were mad at your commentary. Well, well, Alan was just like, I felt you guys were biased, blah, 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 so I talked to him on the Rightfully shop show. So, we're, we're good. Yeah, but my, my whole thing was, is like, there's weight class for a reason. You're giving up 20 pounds. So when he took you down, you have a, a 250, 250 pound man on top of you, it's going to be an issue. He's, been, and, he's about your size junior, right? Yes. Well, I'm two thirty eight. He's 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 two fifty. Yeah. On different supplements. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's six five, two fifty. Yeah. Allen's six two, two th- like two thirty, two thirty one, yeah. like light in the pants. So small, you're small, giving up small 20, frame. twenty pounds. That's a lot. Twenty pounds. So that's why I was saying like it like Allen landed a lot of shots, but Junior has twenty pounds on him. Yes. Like it's a lot Wouldn't of you say weight. Junior is more of a veteran than Alan Belcher no, overall. No. Same, same, same yeah, experience. Alan, oh man. Alan's but, but, been, uh, been fighting forever. Junior's had bigger fights. In the, U- fights. in the UFC. Yeah. yeah. Not in Bear Knuckles. Again, Alan took time off, then came back, got released from the UFC. And he's been fighting Bear Knuckle. Bear Knuckle. Fought and pro boxing. Five and oh in pro boxing. Wow. Bare knuckle world champion. Wow. Then comes the game bread world champion. Like the dude's crushing. Monster. Allen's no pump. How old is he? Savage. Forty. Uh, yeah, Maybe. probably. Yeah. But just like a real general. Like everyone looks up to this guy. Like he's helps a lot of guys out. There's a guy, uh, Tyler Hill, who's addicted to drugs. Allen took him on his wing, got him sober. He fought. Like Allen's like a. Everyone looks to him for guidance. Like he's a straight up general. Yeah, that's awesome. But it, it was cool, man. So you loved it. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Did you see Game Bread there? Uh, Jorge? Jorge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It How's he great. doing? What was he dressed like? Of, I mean. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a legit promoter. Do you think this promotion has, uh, I mean, were there a lot of people there? So, yeah, packed. Really? Packed. So, he's, so Jorge Masvidal. He's on to something. Jorge and that's Masvidal. why I want to get involved. Like, the ones that are already kind of doing their thing and yeah. they're kind of already made their mark like yeah. game bread they're they're working on it and they're they're big they have a really big announcement coming up huge massive really massive. because i feel like um the, the 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 only difference is that there are no gloves this is bare knuckle mm-hmm. right that's very intriguing it's only different it's very intriguing now it's only legal in florida i think tennessee mississippi and they're trying to get legal in new orleans right now does it change the does it change this the way people fight it changes like Alan Belcher. The, the cuts are going to be easier. Um, That's a problem. It depends. You know, it, it just depends. It changes like guys don't really sit down on their shots and exchanges. Like you see a lot of one shots because they don't want to break comp- their hands. No, the, that a maybe some of that. B like you can't be there for the counter because because there's no room for error. You're going to get knocked out. Oh. So you won't see like a four punch punch combo and someone sit down because when there's gloves because you can afford. You can't block this it's way. Tough. You block yeah. like that. It's tough. Yeah. So it's different. These guys are really good at it. Yeah. Somebody throws a hook in your hands here, you're gonna get caught behind the ear. It's like it was great though. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Had so much fun. So much fun. Which I didn't think I would. Yeah. It's and really Robin cool. Black's great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Once you're in there, Robin Black's great. Great. He's, he's really good. Yeah. All of it was fun. Did man. Robin fight? He yeah. He fought like twice. But he's he's commentated like over. I mean, he must be he over a thousand fights. He now. knows his shit. Yeah, that's great. He was the best. Yeah, I was, I was on I was on stage. I kept trying to find it, and I was watching bare knuckle fighting, and I was waiting for you. And I was like, I can't hear. It's on him. kick. And I was like, not wrong. Yeah, it was on kick. What was what, what was it on kick? Kicks, yeah, it's a, they have an exclusive deal with kick. So all the streaming is kick an app or pretty much. Yeah, I think so. I don't really I think know. it's a browser. I heard, uh, but I'll I'll take a look. Right no, now. it's not a browser. Someone told me it was a browser. Oh, okay, kick. Yeah. It could you know, be an app as well, but I heard it was about. Yeah, browser. but they they use it for like a, it's a streaming. I uh I I got to sit through. Um, I think Adrian Ross owns it. I got to sit through a three hour production of Phantom of the Opera that my daughter's in. Um, and obviously, well, I'm gonna, when was that? Oh no, because you were in this Sunday after Louisville. I, I oh, you were in Louisville yeah, and I came here. Right. But I sat for three hours. Then I saw Sam Tripley do his special. It's a busy Sunday, but, buddy. But the the I'll tell you this about when you go to see a high school production. You know how it's usually really amateur. But guess what? We're in LA. 
Yeah, they step the game up, and it's a whole different level. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it'd be maybe kind of like um, who would who would be who would be the best basketball team in America? Like, like going you know, to Sierra Canyon basketball it. game. And this is you what have it's like, like P Diddy there. You have Drake there. This is literally these kids what it's are like. all going D one. Like, when I tell you I saw these kids and they have Broadway level voices, I was like, "Are you out of your fucking mind?" I couldn't believe it. And the dancing, the orchestra, everything was Three like hours. professional. Oh, dude. Three hours. Intermission? Now, my daughter kept me going, but I'm going to tell you this right now. She, uh, she's only a sophomore, so she had a small part. You know, she was in the background. But but um, watching that, having to sit through Phantom of the Opera, Oof. not my kind of music, not my kind of show. The Phantom of the Opera like is never? here. Don't like that kind of music at all. I don't I like, like that kind oh, of music. Oh, I enjoy music. it. Andrew Lloyd Webber's got a lot of bangers. Yeah, yep, about cats? sure does. Sure does. Cats is amazing. Hard pass. Cats is amazing, but yep. I still can't probably sit through. I, I like memories, and then I'm going to be out. You know, okay. It was a long afternoon. And was it at night? When did they do it? Like it six? It was at three uh, in the afternoon, sir. Oh. That's when I get, daddy gets tie tie. Three, three to six. No, daddy gets tie tie. Yeah. At three? When my daughter was up. I'm like, I'm, I'm watching my daughter. because. What know, character but, was she? She was in the background. She's only she's don't just a say sophomore. don't say it lightly. No, I was she had a background great part. drama. No, she had a great. She was great. She had she sang and but she's part of the the. She was the tree. She, there are a lot of different parts. You right? know the tree. Yeah, she's yeah. Like, no, there are a lot. It's a huge. So she's cast, behind huge the tree. Cast, so she's in a, there, there are a lot of different parts. But when you see the eighteen year olds that are there that are and singing seniors? on a level, yeah, are singing on a level that I'm telling you is American Idol shit. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, okay. Well, that that's, that's she has some work to do. Yeah, that like a. But they, she's a sophomore. She's a sophomore. Yeah, of course she's not gonna be the starting quarterback. Is sophomore. Well, that's exactly. Unless you're an absolute freak. Freak. But yeah. it takes work. Yeah. She'll be great. I was a high what, school drama geek. I was a background. Well, so give, to give you an example, the kid who played uh, uh, the Phantom mm -hmm. has Leonardo already, DiCaprio. He's already been on Broadway. <laughs> okay. He's already been on Broadway. All right, that's not even fair. I know. Like he's a and with a with a legit he's got large like a sad part, part in everything. Yeah, so yeah. The, it's L.A. This is what these kids want to do for a living. Yeah, monsters. Yeah, monsters. dude, I took the red eye to fly back because you know I'm the coach on the football team, and we were the number one seed in the playoffs. You win one game, then we go to the Super Bowl. I was like, all right, I'm not going to make the first playoff game. I'll make the Super Bowl. We get I get one hour of sleep, fly, and I, I take an Uber here. I'm texting my wife. I'm like, what quarter is it? Where is it? I, I, the, they for whatever reason they there's usually a break between games they push it like oh nope no God. break we got I'm like oh, no. oh hell no wait no in other words meaning I'm, I'm gonna miss the first half at least because usually there's a break and they push it. I'm like no I'm so mad Uber driver right by it I'm like dude where are you going my wife's like yeah, dude, there's like three minutes left I'm like oh hell no in the so, in the first half no in the game so I'm like oh no no I go just stop here I get out and run with my luggage I get there. I see just Tiger bat down the ball and them celebrating. <gasps> like, okay. And then I gave out the awards. That's a bummer. It's the, all, all season. All season. Because the I whole season text, I'm there. I got a text then, from you. You're sitting there smiling with your son. And, uh, and it just says, uh, we won oh, undefeated. We won the championship. You fuck. Oh. <laughs> My wife was like, that's so aggressive. so aggressive. I was like, that's how guys talk to each other. And then, and then now, no, now uh, baseball season starts today. It's first games today. You're going to coach that? Four. that yep. You don't know baseball though, do you? I know the mechanics. Yeah. I played baseball in high school. I didn't play pro. Right. Obviously, I know football way better. Yeah. But mechanics, discipline, I'll be out there. That starts today. First game with the Braves so cool. today. So cool. His game today, Thursday, Sunday. It baseball's nonstop, nonstop, <laughs> nonstop. Man, and and Tiger just just gets out on the football field and does does some work. Crushes it, yeah. Just work does well. Made for football. The kids you're talking about at your daughter's play. That's Tiger yeah. to every other adult watching kids oh, play I know. sports. Kid. It's like DK Metcalf. I went down that rabbit hole. His dad played pro football. Was mm -hmm. 310 Oof. pounds. It's like you're looking at a whole different thing. You're like, oh, okay, you know. Now I got that Mint 400 race this weekend, dog. Leave Thursday. You got that. It's about a six to eight hour race. I don't know if you know that. I'm in that truck for six to eight hours. I feel like Tim Kennedy's going to be in that race. I don't think so. No? No. Because I'm on a He might with be him. there. I'm on a thread with him and Jimmy Johnson, and he was asking Jimmy for advice. And Jimmy just said, just finish. Finish the race. <laughs> got to finish. Got to finish. Yeah. Maybe. I don't. Check. I would know. Yeah. But I, I would or, imagine, right? Maybe he's a co driver or something like that. I don't know. I would know. I'll hit him up. That'd be great if he is. Yeah, it'd be really cool. Yeah. I got to do a thing with Cowboy on Friday, me and Cowboy together. Really? Yeah. Because no Cowboy's shit. in it. Cowboy, Cowboy races like five, six times a month. Like wow. he's all in. Has his own trucks. Wow. Team. Like really? big operation. Yeah, Cowboy's crushing it. He's crushing it. Crushing it. So I helpful knew, too. I knew Cowboy would crush it. So helpful too. Cowboy helps me with everything. He's the best. He's the best. He told me, he goes, he goes, he goes, we're friends, right? Yeah, he goes, I'm telling you right now, man. 
if I'm behind you, I'm going to run you off the road. I said, is that legal? He goes, it sure is. He goes, now most guys won't, but I will. He goes, I'm playing to win. I'm like, all right, dude, be cool, man. No, I said, cowboy. or just go around. He goes, absolutely not. No, Cowboy will fucking, he's, he's the best. <laughs> yeah. He's, I'm so proud of him, man. I, I love him. Crushing I it, dude. It, it, he, he's just one of those guys, insane career in the UFC. He's just a winner, man. Yeah. You've known him. Oof. I mean, you've known him since he was probably 21. For a hot right? second, yeah. Because yeah. I, I know that you know him. I stayed with him. Well, well, because when I was doing Warrior, he was, nobody knew him. When I was doing, he was fighting. Yeah, that was my boy. At 145, yep. I believe. And he was, uh, or maybe 55, but I think he, it was 45. His, his manager, Sven, in Ring of Fire, I knew him when he was fighting Ring so of Warrior, Fire when he was Warrior doing kickboxing. Warrior was 15 years ago. Oh, I'm no, no, I've known Cowboy probably 20-something years. Yeah. yeah, man. That's a lot. That's my boy, time. yeah. Think he's the best. That. Yeah, I know. Isn't that wild? Damn. He's so funny. Yeah, he's the absolute and now, best. And now he's like juiced and just the hair Set transplant. Of hair. He's a superstar, He's man. like, I'll tell you how to gain weight. You know, I was like, damn, dude. Yeah, cool. he's funny. He, he was like, get ready, man. This truck culture is different, man. They're, they're going to be going crazy over here. And he's like, it's going to be wild. He goes, because, you know, in this truck game, you're the second most famous guy. I went, who's first? I thought you'd say BJ Baldwin. He's like, me, dumbass. I was like, oh, yeah, that's fair. For <laughs> sure. I love him. Yeah, he's the best. I love that guy. Absolute best. We got big fights this weekend, bub. Big fights. Friday, well, let me tell you. So just well, so you know, know what you're talking we about. Got Friday, you got Joshua Anthony Francis. Joshua and Francis Ngannou. Can I get your prediction on that? Because we're going to talk to somebody about that in a little bit here. Yeah. So you got that Friday, and then we got uh, UFC 299, which I think is better than 300. Wow. That's this Saturday in Miami. Miami. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to talking to Chael about this. We're, yeah, we're, we're calling in the big dog, Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen. Who just started a new podcast with DC, Good Guy, Bad Guy. Did you ESPN. see that uh, Nate Diaz? didn't call it said that uh called Daniel dc Cormier. not a real fighter <laughs> yeah what hey nate <laughs> nate nate it's just not a good come on let's watch this hey unless you're a nate diaz like complete dick rider nobody's no even if you're a dick rider i'm a i'm a nate diaz dick rider yeah i love nate but, but also sometimes when somebody you can you can be a dick rider the way i am and hey nate yeah, he's, that's a, that's a ridiculous thing to maybe say maybe he was drunk yeah he i think nate was just no, talking no that's what he always does but but Daniel Cormier, DC needs to stick up for himself more. He's like me. People take shots. He doesn't have to stick up for himself. With the, not a real fighter. He lost. I think he lost to Stipe and John Jones twice, and that's it. Undefeated. And as one of those was over. overturned. Yeah. Thank you. Remember, he was a Strike Force World Champion. Go through the resume oh, that he did. Oh, Strike no, no. Force, light heavyweight champion, then UFC heavyweight champion. Monster. No. What? And then Olympian. Did no, he? Isn't one he of the best a, of all wait, time. Wait, he's a two. He's a two division belt holder and an Olympian. Yeah. Oh. So what else does he have to do to be a fighter? Just curious. Well, it doesn't make sense. But D DC's like me. He's so nice until, until he's not. Until and you're and disrespectful. A and a lot of fighters take shots at DC and he lets it go because he's a commentator, right? Yeah. I've only been commentating for two hours and someone's already talking shit. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then eventually, not a fighter? He'll beat your ass. Right now, DC will beat your ass. But the guy's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Correct. It's just a bad... It's, not, it's just not a good... It's just not a good very approach. strange thing to say. Uh, again, I'm a Nate Diaz dick. Now, writer, now if John Jones says it to him, okay. Yeah. If even if, then, if well, yeah, if Mighty Mouse Johnson says it to him, yeah. Khabib, like these guys that are at that height of the game, right. okay, whatever. They wouldn't what say a, it. They wouldn't. Even say if they it. did, John John would Jones for sure. If GSP says it, okay. But when Nate says it, it's like Bubba, you you're not even the same category. It's not even comparable. Now, we love Nate, and he's a legend in his own, a different way. I say legend loosely, different. When it comes down to, like, the nuts and berries of the fight game, DC's in a different stratosphere. Uh, yeah. I don't, but that's not even a knock on Nate or, his, or anybody. Not many guys are. No. Two-division champion? No. You're in he, rear he ear, dude. Break. Rear ear. But it's not, it's not physi the, physical, physical fighting stupid. Beat. We're not even talking about physical fighting. We're talking about resumes. Yes. They're not. Yes. One's over here and the yes. other's all the way over here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's a strange. It was a strange comment. Yeah, but it, look, we're talking right. about it. That's what Nate wants. Yeah. It's all but how is DC supposed to come back with something? No, I, I mean, if you're DC, you just go like this. Yeah. Like, That's is it I, a I meme? Go, I, go, hmm. I go, Nate. Come on now. No, I, and there's that approach where just be quiet, let him do your thing. It, DC gets a lot of it, and finally, I'm proud of him. He's like, no, hold on, hold up. Are you out of your goddamn mind? We're not even in the same goddamn category. 
Sometimes I get the, the older thing. People are like, just be quiet. Let people talk at some point, especially if it's another professional. Yeah. No, hold up, dude. Hold up, dude. You call me a bitch. You know what the fuck? I look at my resume, dude. Yeah. Like, at some point, enough's enough. I'm proud of DC. Biz being a fire right back at you. Did, go ahead and talk did, to you about Biz being. Did, Biz did, did Let me DC go fire back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, he did. Yeah. He was like, we're not even in the same category. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good... Because people just pile on DC. Pile on, I'm like, really? Yeah. They pile on DC. DC gets a How lot of shit. How the fuck do you pile on one of the most Because he allows it. Impressive fighters Because he, cause he allows time. it. He goes, okay, okay. But and just when, rubs when, off his back. When you've done what he's done, then... They forget, though. They see him as a commentator. They see him as the YouTuber. Yeah, that's I agree with you. almost have forgot. That's really amazing. The more and more I see him, the more and more I almost forget how dangerous he was in the ring. And you just see this like teddy bear who's like yeah. commentating, he's smiling. And I think you kind of view, like, I'm not, I don't want to say he's soft, but uh -huh. yeah, you view well, that. People find out real quick. Let's, uh, why don't we break for Chael? What do you think? <laughs> Should we break? Good segue. Chael? Dude. Yeah, good. Uh, I want to get no, his we, we brought in one of the big dogs. Before we get too much into Joshua, Anthony, we're getting one of the best in the game, Chael Sonnen, to break down UFC 299 for us. So it's Chael Sonnen, everybody. Look, man, let's take Can a little break. Can we take break. a little break, from, a little break from just chatting all things fisticuff? Because I'll tell you what helps me ease my mind at night. You got to calm down at night. Your, your brain's going around. I have to, hour. bro. And that's yeah. why Five Daily Buzz Gummies helps me. Five contains, Daily Buzz Gummies. Only contains two to five milligrams of THC. That's enough for you to feel it, but not get all crazy. Right. They're great called Daily Buzz Gummies flavors. because it's enough to give you just a little daily buzz. It's legal in all 50 states. But is it third-party lab tested? That's important. Is it grown in the United States? I need to know this because let me tell you something about weed. It's sprayed with more pesticides, everything else you can imagine. So I need to make sure the stuff is good and pure. Sure, man. And you can get it for free by visiting 5CBD, spell out 5CBD.com slash fighter. Mm. My favorite's their Daily Buzz Sour. I like the sour on my lips. All right? They we'll, got you we'll guys you covered. We'll give you a $40 bottle free. Just pay for shipping and handling. What a that? deal. That's that's the confidence that they, they know you're going to love Five it. Five Daily They're just Buzz giving Gummies. giving them away. Giving them away. Giving them away. That's 5CBD.com slash fighter. F-I-V-E-C-B-D.com forward slash fighter. If you want auto parts. Oh, dude. Oh, 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 Riley. If you want auto parts, if you want windshield wipers replaced, you want to break... Um, a light. You want a brake light fixed? You want a quick service? They got you. They got you, dude. They they have parts for a twenty year old Ford Lightning. They have parts for whatever car you're driving. And okay. if they don't have it, it shows up the next day. O'Reilly is so helpful. Their team is they're That's knowledgeable. They're free. friendly. They're the best, man. They, and also, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you need a specially tool to finish the job. Don't go out and just buy it. No, O'Reilly got you, man. Yeah, they have the loaner tool program. Simply pay a refundable deposit and borrow the right tool. Get the job done. You get your deposit back when you return the item you used. We got you, man. Whatever you're looking for, whether you're a car aficionado or an auto no rookie like my boy over here, you find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are super knowledgeable, helpful, and best of all, they're friendly, man. Like I said, friendly. I live there. They're the best. Yep. Professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself, and you can find what you need in-store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Visit at O'ReillyAuto.com slash fighter. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash fighter. Jay, with the, the, the new show with DC, I'm excited for you. You guys are two of my favorites. It makes sense. It's the Thank bad you, guy and the good guy. Are you doing that via Zoom? Today. You're doing it via Zoom? Yeah, we did it by Zoom. And how did go, how'd the first episode go? Uh, you know, I thought it was pretty good. We covered like what happened over the weekend, wh which, you know, I, I don't know if you, I don't know how far you can get covering the fight night cards. But, <laughs> yeah, there's not uh, a lot of meat on that. Yeah. yeah, but is, is DC, is DC kind of scared now that um, uh, Nate Diaz said he wasn't a real fighter? Because I, I, I know he must be emotional and probably a little scared. Probably doesn't know what to do with himself because, you know, he. He got a little worked up over that, actually. I thought he kind of misinterpreted. I thought Nate was being more playful than DC did, but it seemed to, like, strike a, no uh, a chord. Oh. You know you know why, though, Chell? And I, I, it's like so many guys take shots at DC. You know, it's like constantly taking sure. shots, his commentating, his commentary, constantly taking shots, and it's like, hold on. This dude is a first ballot 
bona fide Hall of Famer. So I'm glad he stuck up for himself. You both got a lot of kind of drama going on because Masvidal, who I was with over the weekend, Masvidal is coming at you now, saying <laughs> you know you're not a real sure. gangster. So both you guys are on the chopping block here. My my thing about sure. both you guys is that you're both quite quite a bit bigger than both those other guys, and I think they're joking around. I think I think there's some there's some ribbing going on. I, Nate Nate was kidding. Jorge's got to be joking a little bit, right? No, Jorge wants to fight him. That's why he's doing it. <laughs> Jorge wants to fight you? Jorge, I will tell you, Masvidal had like the most insincere retirement ever when he did it. I felt like we could all tell, no, he's not done. He wants to keep doing this. Yeah. I don't know what, how he wants to fight me. Or he, I mean, I, I, I'm retired. I don't know how serious he was about that, but I think he does want to do something. And by the way, what happened? Mas Masvidal and Diaz, it got announced. They were going to box. That mm -hmm. got announced, but then it got it got ran back. No, what it's happened coming. There? It's coming. I don't think I'm at liberty to tell when it's happening. I'll tell you off air, but it's ha it's coming. Uh, All right. They got, they got a big announcement coming up. Big venue, too. That, but but does cool. Masvidal actually want to fight Chael Sonnen? And that's not true. Why wouldn't he? Uh, I don't know. I just feel like Chael's too... Weight classes, that's got to get your blood going a little bit. You've already retired, but that's got to, it's, you're just, a, you're still a fighter. It's got to get you going a little, Chael, because you stay in shape. Last sure. time I saw you, you were every bit of 235. Your head is much bigger than people realize. And I was like, I mean, I, I, I've, I've spent time with Jorge and I've spent time with you and you're much bigger walking around. And I, I feel like you're always, you're always staying tight. You're always, you're always training. I will tell you, it caught me very much off guard, but but I thought it was useful. Like, Maz, but here's here's my rankings. Whether I'm right or wrong, I know I'm at least close. Conor McGregor, biggest draw. Masvidal, number two. Diaz, number three. I'm at least close on that. Yeah. So having the second biggest draw in the sport calling you out has to be a good thing. But what do I do with it? Like, I, I literally was driving in my car thinking that. What do I do with that? What do I spin that into? How do I get attention off of Like, what? where do we go from here I'm not sure how we got here in the first place. Right. And yeah, the whole thing was a little bit baffling because he wasn't offering me a fight. Like he has a promotion and they're paying pretty good money from what I hear, but he wasn't offering me a match. I didn't really know what happened. Maybe yeah. just set really it up for know. down the road. Maybe maybe after he gets done with Nate, maybe you know you'd like something with you. Who knows? I would tune in. I'd tune he's in. Setting it up, and I, I think it's it's uh, a respect thing too. It means you're doing something right. You retired how long ago? And guys are still yeah. calling you out, or your name's still in the in the media. Could so I think it's a good thing. But Jail, the real reason we brought you here, not for all this drama and you know right. all this gossip. The UFC 299 is this Saturday, and then Friday you got Francis Anthony Joshua. Let's start with Friday. Anthony Joshua, Francis, thoughts on that? I love it. I, I really do. The, 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 the most surprising sporting event I have ever witnessed was Francis versus Fury. Agreed. I have never seen an upset like this. And I understand that Francis didn't win. I have never seen anything like that. Like, talk about, you know, telling children, if you dream, if you wanted enough, if you if you can aspire. I could not believe a guy with zero experience just went 30 minutes with the greatest heavyweight boxer alive. I just couldn't believe. Plus, he put him down. One licensed judge says he won the entire fight. Yep. I thought they were going to announce him the winner of the fight. I mean, I'm just sharing for you. But you then have the question, did he overperform and did Fury underperform? And that we we really don't know. Joshua sure thought that Francis overperformed. I mean, he had a chance. He had a chance to fight Francis early on when Francis couldn't fight anybody in no contract in the UFC, and he sat there with his mouth shut. The second that fight was done, he's jumping up and down trying to get it. I mean, I thought that was a bit of a scumbag move by Joshua. Joshua's been able to fight Fury for the last... 10 years and Correct. somehow has found a way to not fight fury so i mean not not for nothing i think francis is the live dog i was with him over the weekend in saudi arabia and That's by with right. it means i saw him uh, he was in the building that i was mm -hmm. in but you know how massive he is i mean he is such a special i mean yes. he, he is just a special Freak. looking intimidating presence and I generally would never think that he could hold up the conditioning to go 30 minutes of boxing he's just got too much body to move around and one thing that he did not do against Fury is he did not react to any of Fury's feints. And when they asked Francis about it, they were paying him a compliment. Hey, you weren't reacting to any of his feints. He said, that isn't because I was so good. He said, I was fearful that I didn't want to waste my energy. 
So that's why I didn't, you know, Smart. flinch. Mm. I just thought it was an interesting comment. But a guy now that he's gone a half hour, 30 minutes out there, now he's in there with Joshua. I think it's a very interesting fight. I mean, I think Francis beats him. How do you like really? that? Oh, you wow. Do. You think he beats him? Now, I would never pick against Francis ever again because going to that Fury fight, I'm like, listen, sweet science. This guy don't have a chance. He has no experience. He's going against the greatest heavyweight to ever do it, in my opinion. But he surprised him. Element surprise. Who knows if Fury prepared properly for that? Now the cat's out of the bag. Francis can box. Joshua goes, I'll do it. So now Joshua has the advantage. He's watching 10 rounds of Francis actually boxing. So that element of surprise is gone. Yeah. Joshua's going to prepare for the best version of Francis because now, again, the, the element of surprise is gone there. So I think this is a much more difficult fight for Francis. Not saying he can't win. Francis can knock out anybody. Joshua gets hit, and I'm rooting for Francis. I just think it's going to be a much tougher fight. I would also and say... And by the way... Yeah. Wouldn't you say well, that? Well, what ahead. happens to Francis if he does lose? Like, wh where does he go from there? Does he have a guarantee with the Saudis? Some say that he does. MMA and PFL, I mean, that was a hard one to start with. It looks like he has an opponent, but coming off a loss, telling the story becomes a little bit more difficult. I feel like he's he's really in a must-win situation, which doesn't have to mean get your hand raised. You know, you can overperform and just beat expectations. But I think he's got to look good. I think it's important that he can I, 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 I think Joshua, though, is every bit, in a lot of ways, probably as strong and hits harder than Fury, especially in the inside. That's why I'm saying it's a tougher fight. Yeah, and I think I think my feeling is this is you might you may very well see that Joshua has just more patterns. He's just a better boxer. He's been doing it longer, better shape, stronger than than Fury, or just you know, in, in terms of just his athleticism and stuff like that. And I he's think also taking it serious. He's taking it very seriously. So he's got that jab. Remember what he did to um to Andy Ortiz in the second fight. Kevin Ruiz. At Bay, uh, Ruiz, I'm sorry. Got a great jab, got on his toes, but he's also got power. And he's also got, I, I think Joshua has the ability, as, and you would know this better than anybody in jail because you boxed for a long time. He, he, he understands probably how to read what, what um, his, you know, uh, Ngannou's patterns are. He'll figure his patterns but out. Me, so and did Tyson, and he got clipped. Yeah, I feel he like... He got clipped, I, and Joshua yeah. has been knocked down more than Tyson. Yes, he has, and he and, gets and hit. My, my only, the only reason why I favor Francis in this fight a little more than I did in the Fury, because Joshua will exchange. And anybody who's willing to exchange with Francis, I don't care who you are, yeah. Tyson, Joshua, Wilder, Usyk, if Francis hits you, you're going down. Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that gamble there. I would say that I don't know if this is true. What do you guys think about this? Is Joshua faster? Does he have ha faster hands than Ngannou? Or is that, is that am I wrong? Uh, does it even matter? Know, what do you think? Uh, you know, uh, he, when looks, it comes to, it, he looks again, slower the against, of he looked slower against Tyson Fury. But then again, if you see his uppercut, you when thought he, Francis looked slow. He looked a little slower th than than I had seen him in the UFC. But oh maybe wow, I thought he gloves. looked better. Oh no, yeah. see that 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 was the surprise to me. Is Francis mm -hmm. boxing looked fantastic? Because mm -hmm. in the UFC, he looks very unorthodox, very wild. You look at the Rosenstruck fight; he's very wild, chins up. I'm like, dude, Tyson can destroy him. Yeah. No, comes out against Fury, and he's locked and loaded. Yeah. Good technique, good head movement, good footwork. So. I, I think Anthony Joshua, again, his, the, his advantage is he knows what he's getting. Tyson didn't. That's the difference. So, and back to your original question, Chael, if not, not even a question, but your point, if Francis loses, what happens? I think he, he's won no matter what. So if he just knocks Joshua down, the MMA community is still support him. The box screen is going, sure. the guy only has one fight. He knocked down the gold medalist. Former multi-time world champion, Anthony Joshua, this is insane. I think the Fury rematch is always going to be there. And I think Deontay Wilder's looking for a dance part partner no matter what. So I think he still has those two no matter what the outcome, unless he gets knocked out in 15 seconds. But if he just puts up somewhat of a fight or has some success, Fury and Wilder are there for him. MMA, I don't think we ever see him in. Mm. Sure. Yeah, it's hard to imagine. And Francis has told us things over time that we've kind of thought, okay, you're not going to be able to pull that off. But then he's pulled them off. And just to remind you, he did make a comment that he's got a guarantee. And he only said this one time, but I, I stored it away. He says he's got a guarantee, Joshua, win or lose, guaranteed, he gets the Fury rematch. And, you know, contracts are a little different. The way they're doing business is, yeah. is a little different. I don't know um, for sure that you could hold somebody or force somebody to get in there. But 
He did make that comment, and I do remember when he said, "Go home." Oh, well, that's that's very interesting. Not to mention when you get guys is so important. I think the Wilder did not look great in his last fight, and yeah. Wilder was a leading candidate to fight Francis. So I, I, almost if you imagine that they did fight Francis, likely the Francis that fought Fury would have beaten Wilder. That would have been huge. Huge. That would well, be such a huge. Forget how big huge. he is. Like you, t- you were saying, he was two seventy two. And it's all muscle, 272 pounds of muscle. Wilder was 218, 219, I think, the last time he fought. Think about that. That's a huge difference. I mean, it's just a huge difference. As hard as he punches. Francis' best matchup is Wilder. To get like a straight up bona fide knockout, Wilder's the best dance partner there. Yeah. So moving on from boxing, Chael, UFC 299, Miami. I think it's a better card than 300. Oh, top to bottom. I'm not saying 300 is bad. Everyone's giving me all this flack going, what do you mean casual 300 is a good card? I'm not saying it's not a good card. I'm saying for being a the 300 event, I like 299 better. It's just a personal thing. Are you excited for 299? I am. I, I, I'll tell you what I'm surprised about is, uh, and St. Denise is a stud, all that nice stuff. I'm surprised that he's a favorite over Dustin Poirier. I'm not quite sure what people are seeing. And we've got that old adage in our sport, you're only as good as your last fight. I've heard it a million times. Dustin Poirier looked pretty good in his last fight, even even with that head kick and going down. I mean, Poirier is about as tough of a night as you're going to find. Poirier wanted five rounds. They, you know, in exchange for taking this on on shorter notice, he got spotted two rounds. And uh, I like Poirier in that fight, man. I'm not sure he doesn't win all five of those rounds, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I agree. But it's also, to your point, with uh, Benoit Saint-Denis, Remember, talk about a jump up in competition. He beat Matt Favrola, the steamroller, who's great. But you're going from uh, basically an on-ranked guy to the number, what, two, three guy in the division? And I know he lost to Gaethje, but you're talking about a huge leap in competition. And he's the favorite as well. Which, uh, again, yep. to your point, it's, it's, to me, it's wild that he's such a kind of a bigger favorite over Dustin Poirier. Yeah, and he's going to feel it. I mean, even though that's not the main event, it's being treated like a main event. Uh, Poirier is going to get the largest reception. They made it five rounds. They got a sold-out building. I mean, I, I think that St. Denise is, is is really up against it. I'm surprised with the odd makers there. And then, by the way, I don't know if you check this, but uh, O'Malley is officially the favorite as well. And the only reason I, I bring that to your attention is these guys have already fought. Yes. And while the ending was weird... So many times, like like as a viewer, there's some piece of psychology, but if you watch something and the ending is weird, you discount everything that happened prior to the ending. I remember Anderson, uh, the first time he fought Weidman. Weidman got him with like a back fist and Anderson had his hands down. And therefore, we dismissed the seven and a half minutes that Weidman had (laughs) dominated that fight to the point that when they rematched, it was the exact same odds. Two to one favorite. Or Anderson. So I just bring that to you that I don't know between Cheeto and O'Malley, like only they would know, but they have a pretty good idea between them who's going to win that fight. They got a pretty good idea between them who wants to win the fight, who was winning the first fight. They're never going to tell us, but they both know whoever's going to win that fight. The two of them already know. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that fight. I, it, it's, I, you know, and Sugar just claims it as a win, stuff like that. Uh, the main event, for whatever reason, to me, isn't the the story of this card. It's a good fight, but you don't see a ton of hype around the main event for whatever reason. I don't know why, but the rest of the card is stacked. Like Kevin Holland, Michael Venom, Page. Uh, Kevin Holland, pretty pretty good, sizable favorite as well. Yeah, why is I like that? that? Is that because? It can't be because of Kevin Holland's striking. I don't think he's the striker that Venom Page is. He's a good striker, but is it is it his? He's a black belt in jujitsu. Is it that? I mean, I, I think it's up in the air with Michael Venom Page, and I'd like your input, Chael. But whenever these guys come over from Bellator or PFL, a lot of them struggle. It's just a, it's a different level in the UFC. Like what what the guys that Kevin Holland have faced, you know, the, his resume is way tougher than Michael Venom Page's. So we don't know how he's going to perform. So I think the odd makers go, we don't know. It's pretty close. We don't know though. Mm. What, what what's your thoughts on Michael Venom Page coming over? It's also about five years too late, to be honest. Yeah, well, he he is such a wildly exciting guy, but historically speaking, guys underperform in their first performance in the UFC for whatever reason. Uh, right off the top of my head is Eddie Alvarez, lost his debut to Cowboy Cerrone, goes on to be the champion of the world. Uh, goes on to do a $17.2 million gate uh, in, in New York City against yep. Connor. I mean, j- just for example, guys, they got to feel it out. It's a little different in the back. The, the shape's a little different. The smell's a little different. The sounds, all of the attention, everything that comes with it, it just doesn't generally lend to a guy's 
best performance. Uh, now, contrary, I think that the matchmakers wanted something favorable for MVP. I think the decision makers picked Kevin Holland because they don't think that he could beat MVP. So, you know, do what you want with that. I do I think, think somebody it's goes. I, I got to go back to this. Yeah. I got to go back. I know we were on Mosball and then we got off of Mosball. But I, I got to stay on this real fast because when you do talk about Mosvall and he wants to fight and he wants to go make a bunch of money and he's a really big name, there is one guy that called him out that he did not respond to, and that is Mike Perry. And as far as like a bare knuckle fight for me that works, that would make me excited, yeah, make me stop what I'm doing, mark on my calendar. It. Jesus, that would do it. Somebody did that go nowhere? Somebody's losing their what? teeth in that one. Oh, boy. For sure. Did you guys ever hear a response from Masvidal, though? I didn't hear him say anything. And I don't know anybody that calls out Masvidal and doesn't get an answer. Mike's a lot, again, Mike's a lot bigger. Mike's a bigger framed guy than Jorge. Jorge uh, fought at 55. What did Mike fight at I was 85? just with both that's the guys a, over the weekend. They're pretty, pretty well, similar, But that's Bubba. because Jorge right now is not training. But yeah, I mean, he is. Frame he's, wise, he's full But frame-wise, Mike Perry is bigger. He fought at 85. Masvidal fought at 55. No way could Mike Perry ever get down to 55. Never. Not if his life depended on it. And that makes a huge difference. And especially if you're bare-knuckling the way he fights where he puts his head down and just starts throwing bombs. Well, Mike and Jorge you know. fight at 85 now, B. They're yeah, I, I understand. But, you, you, but there's still a, there's a frame difference. It just makes it. That's difference. not a reason he wouldn't fight him, though. He's well, no, fight Jorge will fight anybody. Jorge will fight anyone. I'm just trying to say that I, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like that fight. I, I will. T I will tell you just, just it. for conversation's sake, and it was fi been five years. But Perry fought at two different weight classes in the UFC: 55 mm -hmm. and 70. He, he never fought above 70. He just, just to remind yeah. you, he fought at 55. Yeah, yes, yeah, he was. He started off at 55. Oh my god, my bad. The end, Wow. And 70. Well, but he seems big. And, you know, then yeah. he goes and he gets in there with Luke Rock he called him. He that's seems he big, but. Thick. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's actually your mind playing a trick on you, man. Those guys are about <laughs> the same time. Yeah, they are. I want to go back to Sean O'Malley and Marlon Vera. You, Vera, you guys don't seem that excited. My, my, I am so excited about the 35-pound weight class. I think Sean O'Malley has that magic sauce, that thing where he just, he fights his best when all of it is on the line. Like, there's something about that guy. That's that championship kind of gear that he has that he seems to prove over and over again. And Marlon Vera is obviously as good as it gets, probably a little more conservative a fighter, a little bit more fundamental in his fighting than, than would be Sean O'Malley. I don't know how to, how to categorize that. But, but are you saying that they already, you were saying they already know who's going to win that fight? What do you mean by that? They already fought. Well, yes. But but they, that was good, but Sean's Sean's foot died on that fight, right? Well, why did it die? Right. Well, he got checked. He, he I got think. beat. Sure, he got beat. You watch that fight. He got he, beat. Yeah, but he gets. Yeah. Does does Sean get better and better every time he shows up? That's what it feels like. He right? feels like a winner to me. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like yeah. um, that old expression: "Be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it." Like some guys stop themselves from reaching certain potentials. You know, the the lights get too bright. I was in Boston when O'Malley fought. Uh, Aljo for the title and I remember him stopping before he turned to go into the cage and he addressed the crowd and he did one of these numbers but it was a standing ovation mm -hmm. 17,400 people were on their feet for him yes there was no booze there was no one against him it was unbelievable and he went out and had the performance of a lifetime and I kind of thought okay he caught Aljo and Aljo spoke about it afterwards and said no that guy's faster that guy's got angles like i've yes. never had to deal yes. with yes Dynamics. aljo yes. really put him over and i go oh wow okay that's i thought exactly. i saw a really good performance that that's right so, th th yeah. th this is this is going to be both of these guys have high fight iqs and this is this feels like it's going to be a striking match right M my my thing i i just keep thinking about the the large well I, I keep thinking about Marab and I keep thinking about... Well, that's Marab what I was going to say. Like, if, if, Let's say the favorite wins here. Let's say Sugar were to get over on, on Cheeto. What's waiting for Sugar <laughs> yeah. is a, a, a nightmare yeah. in Marab. How do you solve that wrestling problem, Chael? Yeah, that is an interesting one. And, and we don't end up in this spot very often where we have the number one contender identified before the title match takes place. And, and then just over the weekend, you know, we see... Nurmagomedov, who's a perfect monster. Oh, yeah, whatever that is, he's calling out Sandhagen, who's deserved the title shot for two years now and just hasn't gotten one. Like, that division's a mess. And one thing about this sport is we fiercely adhere to whatever rules we make up as we go. Like, let me just give you guys a scenario. 
Okay, Marab's going to fight the winner of Cheeto versus Sean. Now, one thing that is not considered when that statement is made is that Cheeto upset Sean. Yes. It would be very similar to give you an analogy, but when Izzy was getting ready to fight uh, Sean Strickland, he's going to fight Duplessis next. Well, that's unless Strickland beats him, then they wanted to rematch. So I'm just saying, like, it's one of those things you don't know. And then if you don't want to fight Marab, you think he's a bad matchup. Imagine that I'm Sugar Sean O'Malley. I go have a great performance. I've got the microphone. There's the guy in the front row that everybody thinks I'm going to call for. And we're going to do an organic face-off. I turn and point to him. I say, man, this guy is like a brother to me. I love him. I've never brought this public before. This is one of my best friends in the whole world. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but you, Corey Sandhagen, right down the barrel of the camera, and all of a sudden, Marab is on third base wearing a catcher's mitt. You cannot <laughs> run that stuff back. That's yeah. a good right? way. That's that's yeah, smart. Know. That's interesting. You got to there's you got to be a smart guy to do it. But I mean, I'm just sharing for you. You don't have to play along. With the script, no, you can flip the narrative. Something tells me O'Malley's not going to play along. I don't with think the he's going to play along. He, really, he was even entertaining Marab until he saw the, kind of the backlash online. Because remember, he called out Topiria. <coughs> he was calling out Topiria after, yeah. and he's like, "That's the next big fight that scares me the most." And fans are like, "Nah, bro, Marab just destroyed Cejudo." And he's like, "All right, I guess fans want to see that." So I wouldn't be surprised if Sugar flips the script right. to your point and calls out Topiria or something like that. So, so, so when it comes to if you look at someone like Marab's wrestling, okay, which is MMA wrestling, it's Russian, it's it's Sambo, it's Greco, it's freestyle. He's got this con whatever he's doing up there. I, I feel like, and, and I, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna I'm gonna say make a statement, and, and I want you to tell me if I'm right or not. I feel like the reason guys like that. Like, for, for example, if you watch the way uh, Khabib, what he did to Justin Gaethje, you know, when you look at a guy who's been doing that Russian system and he comes across a guy who's been a folk wrestler or just a freestyle guy, you're getting looks. You're getting looks you've never seen before. So someone like Marab is doing things that you've not trained against and you've not prepared for. And I feel like sometimes you've been speaking French and a guy comes at you speaking Chinese and now you have no idea what the hell is going on and you're on your back and you keep staying on your back. How do you prepare for someone like Marab? Do you just bring in as many Dagestanis as you can, as many Russians as you can so you get those looks? I think Connor did that with Khabib, did actually pretty well for a while. Kept him from keeping his putting his putting his hands together. So, so how how do you prepare for something like that? Those real greats that have found a way to weaponize pace. Like I mean, Randy Couture was the first one to do it in our sport, and then that got Pat George St. Pierre started to do it. it. Maybe you'd even bring Usman, but guys that will just throw more shots at the board than anyone else. That's what Marab does. Like before you get to who's better at boxing or who's better at jujitsu, you got to keep him off of you. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got to have a little bit of space. There's no time to set anything up. There's no timing. Kane Velasquez did that. He'd put his head in your chest and just keep moving. He he was hundred percent crazy. crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. What were they calling like cardio Kane yes. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah but like crazy. Or you could even break it down. You had to first deal with this intangible. I mean, that was Cejudo's big problem going in with Marab. It's not necessarily who is a better wrestler. He's going to throw five times the wrestling at you. How are you going to deal with it? And, I mean, I just support what you're saying. Like, that's a really hard guy to plan for. If you don't have a, a great wrestling base as well as a great cardio base, I mean, it, it's a mess. It yeah, doesn't to your point, it's the, it's the pace. I think it's the pace. It's not that they're doing things they haven't seen. Before. Is that They've right? seen Is it all right? before. Okay, that's it's just a relentless, nonstop I didn't realize pace. that. Here, here, okay. here. And then you're defending this, then he's over here. Ah, They've seen it before. No right. one's doing any wrestling move no one's ever seen. Really? No. Okay. These guys have seen it all. Wow. But it's just the relentless pursuit, one after the other, eventually. Eventually, there's like Jesus. O O'Malley, O'Malley, if O'Malley has a very good shot against Marab, though, because Marab, I don't think is the striker. He that he is the wrestler. I think Marab's striking will he. I, I think O'Malley could knock him out of if course. he tried to stand and bang with of course. him. Of course, the 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 guy who has the striking, who has the striking, is Umar Nur Nurmagomedov. He's got that striking. Wow. He's got. Wow. He's got crazy striking. He he is a combination of Jose Aldo and Lyoto Machida. If you look at him, Jesus question, Christ. Yeah, I'm saying it. Wow. I remember, remember I said this. I'm going to say this right now. Umar Nurmagomedov and his brother who's not there. Umar Nurmagomedov's striking is as good as anybody in the K in the UFC right now. Really? He does it all. He doesn't get hit. Watch him. Just watch one, him chill. fight. He doesn't get hit. He's got the boxing. He's got the kicking. It, and he's going to... He's going to... Keep you, question mark, kick you, low kick you, wrestle you. He's got the best. His wrestling is as good as anybody's. He's got world-class wrestling. It's crazy. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. Well, that, that's a huge compliment. I'm, and, I'm and a I also, dick rider. I'm a dick rider on him. 
and his brother. I also think he's very good. He's ranked number 13 right now. So his, his game, like he's 16 and 0 and ranked number 13. His game, yeah. same as so many other guys, is he's got to get up in the loft with some of those bigger name guys. Yeah, we don't know. I yet. think calling out Sandhagen was a very good point. Yeah. But again, let's just go back to O'Malley. If I'm O'Malley and I win and I've got to rematch one of these guys, all of a sudden you're <laughs> delaying that rematch a little bit. And then I'm going to come up with the idea that Marab fight Nurmagomedov. You guys fight you in the go. meanwhile at all. Get rid there of you one go. Of I love that, Jail. I love that. I think, it could, I think it's very sellable. 100% that is. is. Is there anybody else on the card that you're excited for, Chael? I mean, Curtis Blades versus Almeida is a good one. I think there's title implications there, especially if Almeida were to win that one. I think you could see him fight Tommy Aspinall for the intern sure. belt there with what's going on with John and Stipe. Obviously, that needs to get done before anything happens. So I think there's big title implications between Blades and Almeida. Could be I'm curious that. about that. Yeah. Like, like when I watch Almeida, he usually come, he wants to come across, take you down with that double. I'd be impressed if he could pick up Curtis Blades and take him down for 15 straight minutes. Like that would really impress me. And I feel as though this, somebody's put a block on Curtis Blades. I mean, stylistically, he really is a nightmare for everybody, including John Jones. But he's had a really hard time getting his his push. Yeah, I asked about that a few times, and somebody told me that he stutters, that he doesn't like to do interviews because it embarrasses him uh -huh. because he stutters. I don't know if that's true or not because I haven't heard him do interviews. No, I, 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 I had him on food truck. Though. I had him on food truck, and it, he stutters, but it's not. It you know, and you can tell it like it, it, it's an issue for him, but it's nothing like out of the, like you where you'd be like, oh, we can't have this guy on camera. Like really smart guy, dad's a cop. Like Chicago, born and raised. Like there's a story there. You just got to tell it. But as far as his stuttering being a reason, you know, not to put him in front of the camera, I I, I don't see it. He was great, great. Mm. Yeah, and he's good. I mean, he goes out whether whether it's a weird stoppage or not. But he beats Aspinall. I mean, when the when the end of the night comes, really? they raised they That's raised blues his hand. Blues yeah. Hand. yeah. It was like 20 seconds. Asphalt threw a couple of kicks. He fell down. He, he hurt himself. But I mean, I'm just sharing for you. It seems a little weird that Curtis Blades is now opening a card while Aspinall's sitting out there with a belt. Like sometimes there's, there's guys that just have a hard time getting behind him. I think that Curtis Blades is a tough night out. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to compliment uh, Curtis yes. here, whether my words are coming out. But I do think that Almeida is maybe next. He checks a lot of boxes. He's a handsome guy. He appears to uh, be courageous. He's the next Brazilian that they're getting behind and pushing. I think it's a very meaningful matchup for rankings. Agree. Agree. That's the that's the kind of the biggest one on that undercard there. But is there a fight that you want to see? Is there a fight that really gets you going that you just you you if you could if you could do a dream matchup, do you have one in your head? Well, <sighs> I fell for everything at UFC 300. Like this huge announcement that was coming, I got pulled in. Oh my God, George St. Pierre's coming out of retirement and he's going to take on Khabib. Like I was falling for these things. Or you made a Mendes video of released. it too. Every video. Yeah. He'd be like, UFC Javier 300, Mendes. big announcement yes. every week. <laughs> Javier Mendez was talking about, you know, he's, he's training with Khabib and Khabib never trains with him unless he's got a fight coming up. Like yeah. this, these things I was paying um I love very this. close attention to i do like the idea uh you know i like the idea of of, of chamayev of chamayev coming in um in a in a meaningful match whether that was against drikis or that was against strickland but um some of those top guys i like to see chamayev stay a little bit more busy there's rumors that he can't get around and the visa issues those haven't been confirmed but they appear to be true yep. um it's a good time to be a fight fan, Brian. I kind of danced around your question there j just because I've been I've been seeing so many great fights. But yeah. right now, for the ones that are signed, right now, the biggest one is for me is Gaethje versus Holloway. Oh, really? The, see, that uh, that doesn't interest yeah. me, Chell. It makes really? no sense to me. No, because Max Holloway, Topiria, that's the move in Spain. Yes. But now they oh, hurry to make the matchup at 300. Like BMF title, let's be honest, it doesn't mean much. The winner of that fight, it doesn't. Nobody move. You go nowhere. So sure. now, you, now, now, if Max Holloway suffers damage from right. Gaethje, which is more than likely to happen, yes. okay. Well, he's not fighting Topiria anytime soon, so that fight's out the window. Justin beats a one forty five er. Okay. Yeah, I just don't see. It's. I think it's exciting for the fans, but it just it doesn't move the guys anywhere to me. And if you were speaking of 145, a hard question would be, what do you do with Volk? What do you predict? What are they going to do with Volk? I think he needs to rest. Now, do, now <clears throat> I'm on the on the fence of, you know, he's a legend, maybe the greatest of all time. He deserves immediate rematch. 
The problem is if Topir is ready to go and say four or five months, that's not enough time for me. I think Volk needs to rest after two knockouts, let him rest and then come back when he's ready to go. So at, at yeah, 45 stuff and with Topiria, it, it's tough, especially if they want to do it in Spain. You need a big name, you know? Also, Chael, there yeah. is that, that thing where you're, you're at 145 speed really does play a much bigger factor reaction time than it does say at heavyweight. You can, you have a longer career at heavyweight and some would argue, um, he's 35 years old. He's done incredible, incredible things in that cage. Um, and you wonder at times if after getting knocked out twice, you know, uh, you got to take a long time. You got to take a long time to really ask yourself whether or not you, you want to, you, you, you believe truly in your heart that you're still able to get that belt back. And, and if you look at the history of that weight division and you look at people 35 and over, that's, that's a tall order. If anybody can do it, it's Volkanovsky. He can do kind of the impossible. So I'm never going to bet against him. I didn't bet against him against Aporia. He's earned the rematch, though. He's, of course he's yeah. earned the rematch, he's 100%. The, but to your it. point, I would love to see him take a long time because I do think I do think you risk when you get knocked out, now you know taking the risk to get knocked get out again. There is that glass jaw thing where your brain shuts off, You know where you, you wouldn't get knocked out normally, but your brain goes, I've been here before, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. And I think that's... I don't think it's worth it. I think it, it's it's worth. He's earned the right to take a long time off. Jail, are you working uh, the UFC desk this weekend in Miami? Yes, I'll be there. I'm You're leaving in leaving in two days. I'm excited for it. I mean, I think there's something there where, where with O'Malley follows attention, man. Oh yeah, no, I'm man. excited for it. Well, we appreciate you coming on, brother. We know you're doing a million things right now. The episode with DC just came out. New podcast, good guy, bad guy. So uh, we appreciate you, brother. You're the best. I yeah. appreciate you both. And I've had it with you both. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Later, brother. Chael Sonnen. Let's take a break. Take a break. Let's take a break from chatting with the gangster. See that right the there? The American gangster. That's, Your bird chest? That's true, class. Oh, hey, the shirt. Sorry. Hey. Yeah. Come on, dude. Be I, cool. I didn't. No, I, I, a read have, for, I have a nice chest now. Oh, I thought it was a read for pecking plants. No, dude, because when I wear my true classic t-shirt, oh, I don't need pecking plants. You're right, dude. It fits it that body. It hugs my chest my arms, and it hangs loose. Dude, these front. joggers, this is all. That is, actually. The picture you see with Mike Perry over the weekend, oh, that's damn. all true classic. All true classic. This is true classic. Oh, wait, let me see. Oh, my yeah, undies look. undies are true classic. I'm wearing my undies, and they're true classic. Yeah, it's just like, I not wear, only do they make. I always have something from yep, true classic. Yep, not only do they always. make the best t-shirts on the planet, but you're talking about joggers, uh, crew neck sweaters. They got hoodies. They got button-ups. I was ro and rocking they, a black button-up the other day. they sell in packs, too, in premium packs. So they, they, you've got them in packs. You can start with a two or a three pack of t-shirts today. Just feel the difference for yourself. Just d don't take our word for it. All the shirts are made to, they're made to hug the arms, all right, and your chest. Ten so you new look colors, jacked. Too. Yep, they give you just the amount of room for your tummy section. Mm -hmm. And the best part is True Classic sells their premium products in packs. Like Brian said, to help you save, get started with a two or three packs. Can't pick a color. White, black, gray, that's what I like. They got them all, and you can decide yourself whichever one you love. All you got to do to get on board the True Classic, the best in the game, go to trueclassic.com slash fighter, and you can save up to 25% off the best freaking close ever yep all right no matter how you move make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with true classic that's trueclassic.com slash fighter all your clothing needs hey i'll tell you what you want to know about progressive insurance i sure do that's why this episode is brought to you by progressive insurance okay. man look the one-stop shop auto insurance is about it right here. It's, it's called the enter enter the name your price tool from progressive okay the name your price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for your car insurance, then they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options. Now, that is something you want to press play on, okay? It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to choose the best option for you fast. It's just one of the many ways you can save with Progressive Insurance. So, I'll tell you what. 28 million drivers trust Progressive. Let me say that again. 28 million drivers. That's a lot of drivers. They got to be doing something right. Okay? Get a quote today at Progressive.com, all right, to try your name your price tool for yourself. Progressive Casual Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Progressive Insurance. You're welcome. We brought well, in the bad guy to break down UFC 299. Man, I learned something new. Mike Perry never fought at 85. I love when you argue with guys like me and Joe. Yeah. Like, really? Are you sure? All right, man. Yeah.
Uh, it's all sure. good though. Didn't he fight at eighty five? You know, I was thinking Not about him the fighting. Uh, I was thinking of him fighting Bare Knuckle, Bare Knuckle mm-hmm. with uh, Luke. You know, and I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, it all is good. what it is. Um, let's see here. Yeah. But yeah, he did fight obviously one eighty five and Bare Knuckle. Yeah, but seventy, seventy, seventy. Yeah, he's known as a fifty five and then seventy. I can't later. believe he fought at fifty five. All right, well, wild, listen, right? That was great with Chael. Loved it. Chael's Loved the it. best. Yeah, hundred percent. The best. Go check out his show with DC, the good guy and the bad guy on ESPN these days. Yep. Chael's taking over. He's everywhere. He's in Saudi Arabia. As well as he should. He's the best of the best. Smart dude. man. So enjoy UFC 299. I will be at the Mint 400 in Las Vegas. If you're out there, come holler at your boy. Come see me in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I I, uh, I will be in Tulsa, Bricktown Comedy Club, March 15, 16, and then the Brea Improv. April 19 and 20. I'm excited. Um, And thanks for coming out in Louisville. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time. Nice, brother. Enjoy the fights. We're out. This is really the fighter and the kid.